Hi, thank you, Christy. Um, it's great to be here. I'm looking forward to showing everybody a little bit about FeeFox today. So FeeFox is a um, application that is free and available for educators to use uh, immediately. You can use it on your smart device. I think you're going to really enjoy seeing it. A little bit about myself. I've been doing um, STEM education for over 30 years. Um, I started teaching with Lego Robotics clear back in 1988. And since then, I've had the great pleasure to work with teachers and students for 30 years in all kinds of fun areas. Um, the most recent thing I've been focusing on is um, scientific data visualization and getting kids excited about data. And FeeFox is a great way to do that, which you'll see today. The other thing we're going to be taking a look at is um, a product called DataBot, which is um, our, pro our company's product um, from Arbotics LLC. And it actually works with um, FeeFox, which I'm going to show you some examples of that, as well as show you just how to use FeeFox. So um, what we're going to cover today, we're going to start out with um, going through FeeFox and looking at the um, general functions of it and how you can use it. Show you a little bit about the resources that are available. And then we're going to take a look at DataBot, which is a all-in-one sensor device. That's a picture of it there in the lower right-hand corner. It's a tiny cube that actually fits in the palm of your hand. It has a bunch of sensors loaded in it that will communicate with VFOX so kids can take all kinds of fun experimental readings very easily using a tablet or a smartphone. We're actually going to take a look at um, VFOX and DataBot working together. Um, I've got it set up so that I'll actually be able to give you um, a real-time um, demonstration here within the um, webinar so you can see how easy it is to present. For those of you who might be doing distance learning these days, as many people are, um, this is a great tool for that. Um, if kids have a DataBot at home or if they don't, you can use um, the tools within FeeFox and DataBot to actually do some really fun um, science-based demonstrations. Uh, we're going to do a quick highlight of the Next Generation Science Standards, practice number four, and then also some connections to the ISTE standards, um, all of which are accomplished using PFOX and DataBot. And then there will be a few minutes for Q&A if you have any questions. And then uh, all of this is going to be um, wrapped up in a PDF, and it'll be accessible to you after the webinar. So you can take a little bit more time and explore some of the links and resources. So let's start with PFOX. FeeFox is a, um, it's a product of a group in Germany from a technical university called our WTH Aachen University. And uh, it's only four years old. It started in 2016. The um, project manager is, um, just recently got his doctorate, and I think part of that was probably from this product, which is a remarkable tool. And they now have a small project team that's actually developing activities and other resources. So it's received a number of awards already. Um, it's been translated into 16 languages with more coming. Um, it's got an extensive community of users. There's over a million downloads of the software um, so far. So there's lots of people around the world using it. Again, as I mentioned, it's free. You can uh, download it right now while you're watching this webinar even. Um, just go to the App Store or the Google Play Store on your iPhone or um, Android phone or your tablet and download and install. The other neat thing about it is it connects wirelessly to external sensors like DataBot, which allows you to extend its capabilities considerably. The way that it works, it reads the internal sensors in your device, and then um, um, depending on what device you have, so for example, if you have an iPad, this is a snapshot from my iPad right here. When you open FeeFox, you'll see all of the available sensors and experiments um, that you'll be able to do. They'll be grayed out if it's not available. So at the top, you can see raw sensors, um, acceleration, so there's an accelerometer, um, gyroscope, um, it actually will read your GPS. My um, iPad has a barometric pressure capability, so it's got a barometer in it, so you can see your air pressure. Anyway, lots of interesting things. It also has uh, the ability to access your microphone, so you can see a group of acoustics experiments there. And the way FeeFox organizes things, um, they group them into categories. And you'll see a category here with um, DataBot shortly, um, which is very easy to add experiments in from other, um, other um, devices. So the screenshot in the middle 
uh, is what you see after you open up a specific experiment. So I've opened the pendulum experiment and I've gone to the raw data tab. You'll notice some tabs across the top there. And these experiments are really rich. You know, you can enter the data. So for example, the length of your pendulum. And then if you're not quite sure how to conduct the experiment in the upper right hand corner, there's access to all kinds of resources. So if you select experiment information, that's the screen on the far right hand side. You'll see that there's a lot of resources available. Um, the different experiments, some have more resources, some have um, less. This particular one's very rich. It's got a full um, explanation of the activity in the wiki, which is a link down towards the bottom. There's also a link towards the or to the actual sensor um, information, so you know exactly what sensor you're using and how it works. And then one of the really neat things, um, there's a very rich um, YouTube channel that um, the project group in Germany has developed. So a lot of these have accompanying videos. Um, if you tap on video, it'll take you to the YouTube channel. And so for example, you can actually see a video of the experiment being conducted and they kind of walk you through how to set it up. A lot of neat resources. Um, a lot of the experiments that are available are uh, very accessible just with your cell phone. So the ones I've listed there, um, free fall, speed of sound, um, calculating elevator speed, um, sonar. Um, there's a really neat one, in fact, online where you can, um, you determine a frequency and uh, you can actually play that frequency back amplified and you can shatter a wine glass. So that's actually on the FeeFox channel and you can do that with FeeFox and some, some fairly simple apparatus that you might have. So lots of fun, fun things. Um, the last thing I'll show you, um, we are uh, limited in time today, so I'm going to just give you a quick overview. We're actually going to return. You'll see VFOX in action after we take a look at um, Databot. But the last functionality I'll show you here, um, in addition to being able to visualize the data um, live on your phone, it records and also allows you to export that data. So for example, you could go on a field trip, you could record humidity, carbon dioxide, temperature readings with Databot. And then when you come back, you could export all of that very easily into a spreadsheet form. And it's very simple to export the data. You literally just tap on the upper right-hand corner, say export file, and you select the type of file you want. So the default is an Excel file. And uh, you can email it to yourself. You can export it um, by text message. Um, you can save it to your files. I saved it, saved this one as an example to my um, iPad file. I just opened it up so you can see. Very easy to get the data out and into other applications that you might be using. So that is a quick look at FeeFox. Now let's take a look at Databot. Databot is, uh, is the product that I mentioned earlier, is, is from our company, Arbotics. Um, a little sensor cube, it's loaded with um, sensors that are all built in inside. Um, it also comes with an external temperature probe that uh, plugs into one of the ports that are on the top. But take a look at the um, um, list of sensors that are available there. So you've got uh, humidity, you've got ultraviolet, UVA, UVB, um, the index is calculated for you. You've also got the ability to do ambient light, carbon dioxide, volatile organic compounds. Um, there's an inertial measurement unit in it, so you have an accelerometer, gyro, magnetometer, um, a microphone, uh, barometric pressure, altimeter, so many different things you can do with it. Um, one person asked me, well, why, what, what is the benefit of Databot versus um, FeeFox if you have all these sensors built into FeeFox? Well, FeeFox, you don't necessarily want to mount it on a rocket and launch it. You don't want to put it into a, um, you know, you don't want to put your smartphone into danger. So um, Databot is tough as nails. It's in a really tough polycarbonate shell. We've gone through lots of testing with it, launching it on rockets and um, flying on kites, drones, all kinds of crazy things. These are some examples of using Databot, um, mounting it on, for example, a um, Sphero RVR and doing missions where students are trying to capture um, highest uh, levels of, of volatile organic compounds somewhere. So lots of things you can do with it. Uh, here's a few more examples. Weather balloons, very popular. We've got at least four schools that are sending Databot up in um, weather balloons. And it's got a built-in SD card, so you can record um, a lot of data. And when you bring it back, you pop that SD card out, and you can open it up and start the analysis. 
So again, Databot was designed to be very simple to use and very versatile. Um, so for example, we've got all kinds of integration capabilities with it. On the top of it, you'll see there's some expansion ports. And this allows you to integrate with other existing systems you might have. So out of the box, um, Databot's very simple to use, integrates with software like VFOX, so you can be up and running you know, very quickly um, using it for science experiments and visualizing data. If you're gonna use it in a STEM program or you're gonna use it um, in a technology ed program, it's also completely programmable. So lots of versatility with it. These are some fun examples of ways that uh, we've used Databot. And a lot of the activities we create um, are built around the idea of making data fun. So whether you're using VFOX or some other tool to visualize the data from Databot, you know, our goal is to try to make data very accessible and interesting to kids, um, almost as a manipulative where you can play games with it. So these are different games that teachers um, were playing with Databot. Um, the one on the left is a CO2 challenge. Um, I'm trying to get the highest level of carbon dioxide and uh, people came up with some very fun ideas when you would put a bag over her head and uh, try to build up carbon dioxide within the bag. On the right hand side you'll see people using the accelerometer in Databot uh, doing what we call the ninja walk which teaches kids about acceleration due to gravity and uh, also concepts of acceleration versus velocity. So lots of fun ways to use um, data, which is really our mission. We wanna teach kids that scientific data is not something to be intimidated by. It's something to really get excited about, play with and understand. And using tools like VFOX and Databot, it becomes suddenly much more accessible. So Databot works with lots of different tools. Um, we're looking at VFOX today, but it also integrates directly with Excel. Uh, works with a product from Google called Google Science Journal, which is a really neat tool. It's an interactive science portfolio. Literally allows you to take multimedia um, um, observations of pictures, um, of notes that you take, as well as collecting data. So kind of an interactive field notebook. And that's a picture of uh, Databot with Science Journal on the far right. And it kind of gives you an idea of the scale of Databot. You can see it in the hand there. A little bit more about Databot Anatomy. Um, all of the um, sensors are built into the cube again. I had one person ask me whether or not you know, the sensors were separate because you had to plug them in, but no, it's, it's all self-contained with the exception of the waterproof temperature probe, which you can see there in the lower right-hand corner of this um, slide. Um, Databot is not waterproof. There's lots of penetrations in the case that allow for airflow um, and temperature um, conditions to flow through easily so that all the temperature readings and things like that are accurate. So no, you don't want to drop Databot in the river, but you can drop that uh, um, temperature probe into a beaker or a stream easily. I already mentioned this a little bit uh, earlier when we were looking at the um, um, integration with robots but lots of ability to um, interface Databot with other devices. Um, it was specifically designed for interoperability with other robotic systems, with electronics. Uh, you can make your own sensors for it. Lots of fun things. And last thing, this is the bottom of Databot. Um, it's got some pinholes there for Lego um, to snap right into, so you can easily integrate it with your Lego robots. It's got pin and groove system there or a plate slides on, which uh, has Velcro on it. It also integrates directly with um, a Fisher Technic system, which is another great German product that uh, I've used extensively over the years. So anyway, again, Databot was designed to be kind of an all-purpose um, Swiss Army knife device for integrating data collection into other systems. To purchase a Databot, it comes in a kit like this. And it comes complete with all of the things that you need to get started. Um, basically, out of the box, it integrates with VFOX. So you charge it up using the little charge cable there in the lower right-hand corner. Um, you download VFOX. You scan a QR code that we give you, and it automatically loads all of the um, Databot experiments into VFOX. And you're up and running. Other tools that come with it, there's the SD card I'd mentioned. And that's used extensively when you're doing um, things like um, Oh, rocket launches or things that are out of range of your, you know, your VFOX wireless connection. Um, you actually have the ability using uh, different software 
to configure Datavot um, to do um, a much different um, uh, collection speed. So for example, you can have it take a sample an hour or a sample a day if you wanted to do some long-term environmental studies. That uh, little image on the left is a Velcro plate. That's what slides onto the bottom. Uh, we've had people use um, Velcro to um, attach it to things like drones, frisbees, um, you name it, it's probably been done with it. In the last in the lower left hand corner, you'll see a lanyard. So you can hang it around your neck, you can swing it as a pendulum, all kinds of fun things. The other nice thing about Databot is it's very small. So all of this uh, collects into that small case, which is uh, um, easy to store and uh, not a lot of pieces and parts to chase. So now what I want to do is actually give you a live demonstration of, of FeeFox and Databot. So what I'm going to do here is um, switch the screen and we're going to connect to the Databot using my smartphone. And I'll actually display that on the screen so you can see it live. Give me one moment here. There we go. So what this is, you're, you're able actually to um, pull up the display. You're actually able to pull up the display of the um, sensors on a web page, and that's what I'm doing. So it's being broadcast live from my phone to this web address, and I'm about to connect to my data bot using the wireless connection. You can't see it, but uh, we'll be live here in one second. And I'm enabling the remote access. Now, if we reload that page, it should be live. There we go. So this particular screen is showing all of the Databot um, sensors live coming from my phone. And you can see that uh, uh, there's a temperature reading there. I'm going to actually grab the thermometer and I've got it in my hand. You'll see the temperature increasing. If we move it around, you'll see the accelerometer um, changing. You can see acceleration due to gravity being displayed on the y-axis. If I could hold it perfectly steady, it would read out at 9.8 meters per second squared. That's a great little challenge for kids. Um, some of the other screens we have here, I'm actually going to show you what FeeFox looks like. These are different tabs. So here you can see the carbon dioxide level being displayed, as well as volatile organic compounds. The environmental tab shows you humidity, air pressure, temperature. And then you've got um, the UV readings down as well as lux, you know, your ambient light. And what we're going to do is a quick demonstration of carbon dioxide. This is a great challenge for kids too. This is one that we were doing with uh, science teachers at one of the conferences where it was called Huff and Puff. I showed you a picture of that where you're trying to generate the highest carbon dioxide level possible. So what I'm going to do is just breathe on Databot and uh, the carbon dioxide levels should elevate. And you can see it auto scaling there. It automatically changes the scale. And you can see that uh, we've gone from the 400 or so parts per million in, in my office here where I'm broadcasting from to over a thousand just by breathing on it. So you get very immediate feedback, um, great access to um, scientific sensor data, really easy to use. Um, I'm using a series of these sensors actually in some distance learning classes as well. And uh, kids at home can follow along with the experiments or you can use it just as a demonstration tool. So again, I think the uh, thing I'd like to emphasize about FeeFox and Databot together is just you know how very simple they are to use. And we're gonna switch back here. I'm gonna unshare that particular screen. See if I've missed anything. I might have had something else I was gonna show you. Oh, I was gonna show you one other thing here, the exporting of data. So um, exporting is very simple. And I showed you a screen capture of it before, but you can actually do that here in the web page as well. Uh, I need to get my web page minimized a little bit so I can grab the menu. There we go. So right up here, you'll notice this is where we export the data. 
what I'm going to do is stop the recording. And if we go up here to export, you'll notice it pops up a little menu here. So I can download the Excel file just directly to my computer, which I'm using. If I was on the smartphone, as I showed you in the screen captures before, it gives you the ability to text or email them. And these are the different file formats that you have the ability to export in. So access to the data, super simple, and uh, controlling it remotely using the web um, interface, very simple. And uh, visualizing all those different uh, sensors, very simple. One other thing about FeeFox that I really like that we're using for curriculum development is, I mentioned QR codes. So a specific set of activities that use, let's say, let's say it's an environmental set that might use um, just these three sensors. You can have that preset, student would scan the QR code, it'll pre-configure all of that for you, and there's no fiddling around. Student opens up that experiment, those sensors are already pre-selected, they hit the little record button up here, and data will immediately begin flowing for them so that they can start recording. So it makes it super simple and accessible in the classroom. I think that was the last thing I wanted to show you here. So I'm going to stop my screen sharing. And we're going to return to the webinar presentation. Again, this whole thing will be sent to you after the fact. There we go. You never know when you're moving around in these things, if it's going to be a smooth transition or not, but that went pretty well. So you've seen a live demonstration of FeeFox and Databot working together. And next, just quickly, we were going to address something about the um, NGSS standards. So doing CO2, that experiment alone addresses um, one, of the, um, one of the standards there that you can see where we're learning about um, how matter and energy flows through different systems. So. Um, by holding your breath, for example, I had a competition with a set of third graders that uh, um, one of the students figured out very quickly they could hold their breath and end up with a much, much higher CO2 level. So by interacting with the data, they're actually learning about living systems, how we interact with things like oxygen and carbon dioxide, and how that uh, um, recombines in different interesting ways. Um, the practice of analyzing and interpreting data is a core NGSS practice, and every time you use Databot, you're doing that. Um, anytime you're using FeeFox, you're doing that, or any of these other data collection tools I mentioned. And again, the core mission of Arbotics, um, when we produced Databot, was to really make, again, data accessible, super friendly, and uh, something that uh, doesn't intimidate people. Typically, when kids hear the word data, even adults, it's like, oh, we're going to look at spreadsheets and fun charts, you know, and it's, it doesn't get people excited. But if you can come up with ways for people to interact with data, use it almost as a manipulative, you know, that whole paradigm changes and kids become a lot more familiar with how to interpret data. This is a quick snapshot of, of um, something within the ISTE standards, which um, is a direct connection also to the tools I was just showing you. Because students are curating information from digital resources like FeeFox or Google Science Journal or Excel, and they're using tools and methods to create these collections that demonstrate meaningful connections and conclusions. So for example, again, our carbon dioxide, um, kids are making direct connections to um, um, the data how it's visualized in these digital tools, they're being able to save that data. So direct connections to ISTE standards as well. And that's the end of the presentation. I wanted to make sure we had about five minutes left for questions and answers. And then also the um, table of contents here, you'll notice that this PDF that we're gonna share with you has um, lots of information in terms of um, going going deeper and lots of uh, resources um, to FeeFox and some of the other types of tools I mentioned. So with that, Christy, do we have any questions? I do have one question. Um, as a teacher, what support materials are available to help me get the most out of my data bot? So there's actually a ton of materials um, built into FeeFox. Each one of the raw sensors has an explanation of how to use it. And then on our website, we've got a number of things that um, 
um, show you how to use the data bot. So for example, those blog um, entries where I was showing you some of the data games that we were playing with teachers. Um, there are write-ups on how to do um, a data game around carbon dioxide. Um, there's a really fun one called the Ninja Walk, which we had a picture of there. Um, there's another one called the Whirling Dervish, where kids actually learn about, um, it introduces units. So for example, um, what are radians? Teaching kids that uh, um, um, acceleration due to gravity is exerted on us constantly. So the Whirling Dervish game, which is written up in one of those blogs, is a, is a particularly fun one. When kids um, put the data bot on their head wearing a flat hat, and they have to stay perfectly level and watch the data read out from DataBot to make sure that it's reading you know, perfectly at 9.8 meters per second squared. If they start to shift off of level, the um, um, acceleration due to gravity shifts also, and that number will change. So they never forget 9.8 meters per second squared, for example, when they're doing that activity. And then the other thing um, is turning at a perfect rate of one radian per second which teaches kids about the units of radians. And it also, um, it also ties it all together nicely in terms of making it an interactive data experience. You know, they're, they're using the data, they're trying to execute a perfect one second uh, radian turn, and they're also trying to um, keep perfectly level. So they're learning about gravity. So those kinds of resources are all on our blog. Um, we're actually producing a series of carbon dioxide activities um, this month, which uh, will be a lot of fun, and those will be um, shared with videos and write-ups as well. That's great. Um, that looks like the end of our questions. So I don't know if you can move on to the final slide or if you wanted to share something else. I can run through some of the um, support slides here that are included. So for example, these are the product configurations for um, Databot. Um, comes in three different configurations. So the single kit, which is the one on the far left there, is one data bot and then the applied root accessories that come with it that we talked about. Uh, the twin pack um, is in one case again, but it has twice the accessories all included plus two data bots. And that allows you to keep all of the materials together in a very compact um, space. And then the third one is the class pack, which is a group of 10. Um, we recommend doing um, Databot in pairs. So for example, some of the activities that we've done, um, one of them that I showed you was the uh, Databot mounted on the Sphero RVR. Students typically um, set up as one person is the data scientist and then the, the other is running the experiment. And um, that one's, that's a fun way to do it in groups of two because then both kids are very actively engaged. So again, with the RVR, one student was acting as the pilot, uh, actually running the course with the data bot on the RVR, trying to identify where are the hazardous fumes coming from. And the other student was recording the data and letting the student know, you know, okay, this one's, we're getting close. So it's a great interactive experience and a great team um, experience. The other thing I'll point out about the class pack is um, those are so small that it packs down um, in those five cases into a box about the size of a shoe box, so really easily stored. The other resources that are um, included on this PDF that um, will be sent out to you after the um, webinar, all of the technical information on Databot is available online. Um, some of it's listed here but we have what we call a deep geek section on the website that allows you to go very deep in terms of the actual um, data sheets for the um, data bot and the sensors that are on board. And then there's also um, how to's on the website that uh, actually show you how to use um, data bot with all this other software. So integrating with um, Excel is very simple. There's a product that allows you to actually live stream data from Databot right into Excel, which is a great application of that particular um, software. Again, you can write to the SD card. So we've got extensive um, information about how to do that. So if you're gonna do a balloon launch or other things, it comes with an eight gig card. So you can store a ton of data on that. And then Science Journal is the other application I mentioned, which is another free app that's out there. You can download that from the App Store or the Play Store. And um, um, yeah, they're all great tools and all of those uh, will integrate easily with Databot. And I think that wraps it up. Well, 
Well, thank you so much, Robert. That was a ton of awesome information. And if anybody would like more information or have questions, you can contest, uh, contact us at Studica. You can reach us at info at studica.com or call 888-561-7521. And again, I will be sending an email with the recording of that webinar. So if you do have any questions, you can just reply to that as well. Thank you so much for joining us today.